excited to share this with you. I am so, look y'all. I am so excited. I love when the word of God just opens up. And oh, so anyway, we're just going to get right into this. This is juicy. Okay, so it says, this is uh, John chapter 6. And this is like a side note to what like I'm actually looking at and and reading and writing down like my notes and what I'm preparing to share this is just something like a little side note but I got to share this with you because I don't want to miss this and plus I want to have it recorded so that I can always fall back on it myself so John chapter 6 right is verse number 26 and 27 it might go down to 29 I don't know but we're going to do 26 and 27 um, so Jesus is talking, right? And it's one of those for real, for real statements. Those like, like back from when I was searching and still am like, I want truth, right? And Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, right? But he's also the light, right? And, and, and so that's the light part. That's something I'm going to share later, right? But he's the way, the truth and the life, right? So I was searching for truth. I got tired of the lies of this world. All I want is truth, right? So whenever I read, assuredly, uh, most assuredly, or assuredly, I say to you, he's saying this is this is tr this is true. You know, and depending on what translation you're reading from, it might say most truly. I say to you, you know, for me, that's like for real, for real. Like like this is for real, but this is not just for real. This is for real, for real, which means it is solidly confirmed. Whenever you hear anything twice right so get right into this because I don't <laughs> just wasted like two minutes just going into detail so this is John chapter 6 and starting at verse 26 listen to what it says it says Jesus answered them and said okay so let me let's see um Okay, so let me just back it up to 22 so that you know exactly what's happening it says on the following day when the people were standing on the other side of the sea um saw that there was no other boat there except the one which the disciples had entered and jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples but his disciples had gone away alone however other boats came from tiberius near the place where they ate bread after the lord had given thanks I says, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Like they all excited to see him, right? But they were excited to see him because he had just got through feeding them like multitudes of people. How many did he feed? 5,000. John 6, um, the earlier verses, verse 1 through uh, whatever, 1 through 13. He had just got through feeding 5,000 people, 5,000 people. And earlier than that, he had fed thousands too. So anyway, Jesus answers him. So now here we are at the verse that I, that I'm uh, when the reads he got. It says, "Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled." Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. So, so look, I want to stop there for a second, right? Um, now, further on down, when we get down to, which is where I was reading and this writing that I'm actually preparing about Jesus being the bread of heaven, right? He's the bread of life, right? And so here in verse 26, he's saying, you don't, you didn't seek me because you saw the signs. You, you, um, it says you sought me or you seek after me because you ate of the loaves and was filled. You ate of the loaves and was filled. So this is standing out to me because of this reason. I'm reading this, right? King Jesus himself is, is talking, right? He said, you didn't seek me because you saw the signs. 
Yesterday, I did this video and I was talking about the signs like we're seeing because he, he gives us, he, he tells us ahead of time what to look for, right? And so, um, yesterday I mentioned how the day before there was this, um, this country-wide shutdown that happened that was not reported anywhere right anywhere like i went to go look it up and i could not find no reference to it anywhere but the reason the reason i know that it happened is because of the fact that um a person who works in a store as a manager i happen to be talking to this person on the phone and we were talking about listening and paying attention right and i was telling him i was sharing with him that that like all of us every last one of us we're going to all learn but how we learn is dependent upon two things number one are we listening you know are we one that listen and hear and obey because we heard the warning so are we going to obey that way or are we a person that has to see it for ourselves right and so he says most assuredly i say to you you seek me not because you saw the signs but because you ate the loaves and were filled and i'm looking at this now i knew that jesus was talking about the people who he had fed, like, like you know, after he had preached to them this amazing work, then he fed them, you know, he had his disciples feed them, and then they left, right? And so the people kept following him because they wanted to be fed more. They wasn't getting it, right? But see, God's word is a two-edged sword, okay? It's a two-edged sword. And so because of that, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> So these signs that I had mentioned yesterday, right, the the um the one with this this shutdown that happened on the 22nd of February, the second month, the 22nd day of the month, the year 2022, right, on a Tuesday. <laughs> so I had mentioned that, and then like um as I was researching it, I happened to see this uh uh news report news cnn news and uh one of the ladies from representing ireland was speaking in this uh big old session that was going on and um one of the things she mentioned was peace and security and when she said that i'm like oh snap wait that took me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You got to read. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You got to read verses 1 through 11. But in those verses, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I think it's verse number 5. Is it? I think it's verse number 5. And that stood out to me because yesterday when I saw that, now I'm 55 years old, right? And I, and I call it double digits because it's the same digit, right? So I'm 55 years old, right? And so this verse stands out to me, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. And there is saying that, that when they begin to cry out peace and security or peace in, uh, what did it say? I think it said peace and security. It says and sudden destruction will be upon them, right? So I get up this morning after five. <laughs> I get up this morning and, and I'm looking at all this stuff. Again, my eyes are gra like I didn't know what I was going to study, but I'm gravitating to that again. And I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, like paying attention. And it's taking me on this journey, which dropped me in John chapter six. And so when he says, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me because look i'm seeking king jesus right i want to be in his presence i want to abide with king jesus i want to hear i am seeking right so he says you seek me not because you saw the signs which is true and like i'm i'm beginning to see these signs right so number one the the first sign which i mentioned to y'all about this government shutdown which ain't nowhere on the computer like no nobody spoke about what happened on the 26th it's not on youtube you know where we as individuals like put up our stuff like there's it's like nothing said right so i saw that I saw that because he says to us, he said to um in, in Matthew chapter 24, when the people were asking, tell us 
when would these things be? And they were talking about, at that time, the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Back then, they weren't thinking about us, although Jesus, King Jesus, was thinking about us. So that that he told them had a, a bigger significance than for their day. But it was for them too, right? Two-edged sword, right? So, so um, when he told them that, and he told them what to look for, the different things to look for, I was looking at that yesterday too. <laughs> I was looking at that yesterday too because he warned them ahead of a time what to look for. He told them the signs to look for, right? And so uh, there were some who listened and obeyed these signs. Like when they saw this, they listened to Jesus. They heard him. They listened to him. So when they saw these different signs happening, they knew to move. It is time. It's time. It's time. We got to move. We got to stick. We got to move. We got to go. You know. And and when that door opened for them to get out, they listened and they got out of Jerusalem. Right? They got out. So those who did not listen, they saw the signs too, just like everybody. But they did not listen. They were still in Jerusalem, and then they got stuck in Jerusalem to the point that, okay, now I'm here. I can't get out. Now I have to ride through this thing. Now I have to go through this thing because I didn't listen. I can't get out. And so a lot of them, um, and I went to look this up yesterday, and I, I don't think I, even in that little video that I did yesterday, I don't think I shared this, but those who got stuck in Jerusalem, like it was a hard, hard time for them. As a matter of fact, I did share this because I was uh, saying that I wanted to look up and see where I read this at, but they suffered hard. It got to the point that um, they even had to eat, like, like when people were dying, because there was no food, there was nothing, nothing, there was no food, no nothing, no animals, no squirrels, no rats, no nothing, and it got to the point that in order to stay alive, um, in order to stay alive, um, like if a person died, like if a child died or a person died, they began to eat that, that individual, right? Um, because they were trying to survive. And it, it was bad, y'all. Like, go do some research about the siege of Jerusalem. And But the, here's the deal. The deal is, had they listened, had they listened, they would not have had this happen to them, right? So here it says, most assuredly, um, oh, had they listened, they, they would not have experienced all that. So anyway, I'm sitting here and I'm reading this and he said, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, not because you saw the signs. Right, it says, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled, and I realized, oh, that's true. Because, like, here's the loaf right here, this is the bread right here. And I ate as I read it, I eat it. See, one of the things that um, the Lord had said to Ezekiel when Ezekiel was being called. Father said to Ezekiel, he said, you eat this. He said, all that I'm giving you, eat it. Get it in your belly first. And then after you eat it, you begin to speak it, right? And so I seek Jesus. Like, I'm reading this and I'm understanding it. I am literally being filled. I am getting it. I'm understanding. Like, y'all see how big my eyeballs are? <laughs> I don't walk around all day with my eyeballs like this. Like, I honestly don't walk around all day. Like, but when I read God's word. And so that's what, and what brought me here is, and I need to come back here, but let me, let me uh, go over here to, to verse 35 real quick. Where King Jesus said, he says, I am the bread of life. Jesus says that. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. So one of the things that I had wrote down in my notes, I had wrote down, I'm about to, to get this. Because this was the first thing that stood out to me even before. See? It says, are you hungry? 
come to Jesus? Are you thirsty? Believe in him. And I wrote that down because I wanted to take note because there are different places in the Bible where it speaks of being hungry, how they were hungry no more. Why is it that they were hungry no more? Because they came to Jesus. Why is it that they thirst no more? Because they believed in Jesus. And so I, I wrote that down to take note of that and where it was because that's a key scripture, right? So anyway, he says, because you ate of the loaves and were Feel. That's what causes us to seek, right? Oh, okay. Ooh, I, gotta, I gotta underline too. I gotta make sure I write this down. Okay, so let me share this with you. This, this, this what what the Holy Spirit just spoke to me, like just like that, just spoke to me. Okay, so in Second Chronicles, right, y'all, y'all better catch this. In Second Chronicles, God tells us in chapter seven of Second Chronicles. I'm about to go over here real quick. I'm gonna keep my hand right here. I don't want to lose this. Um, God tells us in Second Chronicles chapter seven what to do. He literally tells us. He tells us. He he tells us what to look for. Again, the signs, right? We see the signs, right? He tells us what to look for. But we don't have to. If we are already seeking King Jesus, if because he said, he said, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and was filled, right? And so that's that's like because I'm listening and my ears is opening and and or, or they're opening even more and more, right? And I'm hearing, right? So that's that's why I seek him, right? But check this out about the signs, right? Here, this is Second Chronicles chapter seven, and we quote this verse 13 and 14 right we mostly quote verse 14 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways God says then then I will hear from heaven he says then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land right but look the signs he gave signs he told us what to look for right he told us what to look for so we're gonna go over this we're gonna go over this we about to do this and this is none of this is scripted any either so like my intent was that it was gonna be a short video and that i was going to just post it to facebook real quick and look i'm past the time so i already know this is about to be a youtube <laughs> none of this is scripted so, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse 13. Let's look at these signs. He says, When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain. We're going to stop there for a second because there's three signs. So, this is the first one. When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain. So, let's understand this. We're going to look outside. Okay, because we see with our natural eye and we're able to see all this stuff. So we're going to look outside and we're going to look up to the heavens. We're going to look up at the sky. We're going to look up at the clouds, right? Because we know when the rain falls, it's, it's a gloomy day. Like right now, it's gloomy outside. It's real foggy outside. Um, so um, when it's clouds in the sky, we know that it's getting ready to rain. The darker the clouds, we know it's getting ready to rain, right? So the rain, when it rains, it cleanses our earth, it cleanses the ground, washes away a lot of stuff, right? But it also moistens the ground so that all the plants in the ground, um, they have what they need to grow, right? Because in a dry ground, when, when the ground is dry and it's hardened, can't nothing grow in that, right? So we need the water, right? So if there is no rain, our trees and vegetation, you know, the, the greenery, like none of that. Oh, that makes me look at my plants, but I'm, I'm going to have to water my plants. But but the, if there is no rain, if there is no water, he said, I'm going to shut up the heaven so that, uh, what is, when I shut up the heaven and there is no rain. So we're talking about no water, right? We need the water, right? So if there's no rain, then what's on the earth cannot grow. It will not flourish right and so when there is no growth now we're going to look at this when there is no growth when there is no um 
trees putting forth fruits and vegetations when there is no growth. What we have, and all of us on this earth, and we all got to eat, right? Right? And, and we were just talking about eating earlier in John chapter 6, right? And so when there's no growth, there's no vegetation, and, and, and um, what we do have becomes begins to be rationed out because there's a famine. Ooh-hoo. Ooh-hoo. It begins to be rationed out because there is a famine, right? Because there is no growth, because there is no land. So we're talking about lack um, that happens, right? So uh, there's so so prices begin to go up. What they call that a, a recession or depression or however financially prices begin to go up things become really expensive like like when we look around us now like i heard somebody talking about the high guy high gas prices and like if you listen to the news and they're talking about price, and when you look on your shelves and you see that 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 the shelves is not having um not fully stocked and you know there's just all types of issues when you do this okay and when you take notice of this when you take notice of this uh he says when i shut up the heavens and there is no rain we're talking financial this is a financial burden now financial your, your pockets getting hit this is a financial burden okay so that's the first sign financial second sign or command the locusts to devour the land. These locusts, y'all, I am not a bug person. I do not do bugs. I lo- locusts, grasshoppers, caterpillars. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now last year, last year when we were growing in the garden, the bugs, the season of the bugs, I like when I tell y'all, my husband was outside kicking butt, fighting them like. Oh my gosh, I discovered that, did you know that caterpillars be under the ground? And when they're getting ready to come forth, like if it rains or whatever, but when they're getting ready to come forth, they come out from under the ground. Y'all, I saw some stuff last year. So anyway, he says, or when I command the locusts to devour the land, and that's what they do. They go through and they get to eat like, uh, what plant was it that I had? My kiwi. Okay, so I have kiwi that's growing, right? I had this really big, beautiful, it was big and it was beautiful, right? And I was all excited. I'm like, I'm about to have some kiwi. And the locusts came. And how they, they, them things climbed, had to climb up the table because I didn't have my plant in the ground. So they had to climb up the table, up the container that I was growing this in, and into the container to get, and they didn't mess with, like, I have a plant growing now that is a, a, sister plant to the plant that they killed they got my big one my two little ones that was in the little pot they didn't go after those i don't know why but they went after my big one and i literally and i was looking i'm like what is happening to my plant like like what and i didn't know right and this one particular day i happened to see this this big fat (laughs) caterpillar in my plant in my bucket so he says when i command the locusts to devour so so look devouring okay now we know that they are destroyers right they're destroyers but how you see this around you when you start seeing a lot of death happening around you these are the signs okay when you see death happening around you when you see um things breaking down computers breaking down your electronics breaking down your cars breaking down when you see relationships breaking down okay friendships um, falling apart marriages falling apart okay that's the locust in the spiritual sense that is the locust that was commanded to devour god told us what to look for okay um he says and this is the third thing he says or send pestilence among my people now a pestilence that's a sickness 
a disease, a sickness or a disease. Now, sickness is when you have both the illness and disease. I hope y'all caught that video that I did, that live broadcast that I did when I talked about that. John, um, not John, Matthew chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus said to the disciples, to the disciples, those of us who believe, he said he gave us power over this stuff where we could heal all this stuff, right? I hope y'all caught that video. If you didn't, go on my social media page because I know it's there. Um, I don't know if I put it on YouTube yet, but definitely go to my social media page. So anyway, he tells us what to look for. He says, when I shut up the heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. Now, here's the deal. Catch this now. He said, or. He didn't say and. He said, or. That means that... It doesn't have to be all three of these things that happens to you. If you just see one, if you just see one, then he's telling us what to do. See, whenever you see the word and, then that means both things has to be true. One and the other. They both have to be true. But when you see or, it means that they don't both have to be true. But if you see the one, you know what to do. So look, look at what he tells us to do. This verse 14. He says, if my people... Okay, he's talking to us who believe, us who claim that we are Christian. I don't care what denomination that that you div uh, that that you um, divide yourself into, or say, you know what, I belong to this, or I belong to this, or I belong to this. You know, we we would we'll address that later on because Paul addressed that. You know, and he said that that we all belong to Christ. We don't belong we're not following these different denominations we belong to christ um but anyway anyway he said if my people who are called by my name okay okay he says if we will humble ourselves if we'll get rid of this pride you know if we stop thinking we got this stop thinking we could do this if we stop looking to ourselves like that scripture say up there Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge God and he will, uh, what did it say? He will direct your paths. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. He tells us what to do if we humble ourselves. If we remember that we are his children his children and therefore he will take care of us just like a little child like one of your children if you have children um if like your children will run to you as a parent for whatever it is that they need or whatever it is that is going on or whatever it is that they're hurting how they will run to a parent that's how we're supposed to run to our heavenly father he said if my people who are called by my name if my children will humble themselves okay he says that's the first thing we're to humble ourselves he says is and pray so there's two things that have to happen we got to humble ourselves we have to pray and check out the order he's given us the order because understand this is important because you could pray all day long but if you don't have any humility in your prayer it's going to affect your prayer and it's going to affect whether or not how you're answered too so you want to humble yourself first hit the knees hit the knees bow your heart down before the lord because some people can't get on their knees you know <laughs> but bow your heart before the lord humble yourself before the lord acknowledge that our heavenly father is sovereign that he is right everything he said has been right all along the things that we're going through is because of our own disobedience he said humble ourselves he says and pray and seek my face that's the part that i wanted to get through get to for the third thing that we're to do and seek his face right 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 so now we're going to go back to john 6 but let me um do this last one real quick let me finish up this verse verse 14 it says and turn from their wicked ways so not only are we going to seek his face which we're about to discuss that but we got to there's an action that we have to do and that action is to turn around like like whichever direction we go in that's the wrong direction turn around <laughs> Turn from our wicked ways. He says, then I will hear from heaven. So we got these four things that we have to do. 
four things he tells us what to do humble ourselves pray seek his face and turn around and and when we do that he says then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And let's go back over to John chapter 6. Because remember, he told us to seek his face, right? So, John chapter 6, verse 26. He said, Jesus says, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me. Now, 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 he's telling us, here he's telling us how to seek. Oh, that's going to be my title for this. How to seek the Lord. How? How? He's telling us how. Because you can read 2 Chronicles all day long and people think, you know, okay, well, I prayed. You know, but you prayed. You said amen and you went on about your day, right? Did you stop and, and, and get an answer from the Lord, right? Do you know how to get an answer from the Lord, right, right, right? Because he tells us to pray and seek his face right but do you know how so ooh, let me um john chapter 6 verse 26 i want to underline in my bible yes i write in my bible i take notes all up in my bible i don't play because i don't want to forget any of this so seek my face i underline that and i'm putting in my bible john chapter 6 verse 26 how to seek the Lord. Okay. I had to get that in there. Okay. John chapter 6. He says, Most assuredly, truly, for real, for real, I say to you, you seek me. How? Not because you saw the signs. What are the signs? The signs are. Oh, what are the signs? The signs are found in Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse thirteen, and we're they're all around us, right? But are we paying attention? So he says we seek him not because we saw the signs, but his his is why we seek him because we ate the loaves and was filled. Because we ate the loaves and was filled, we need to eat this and get it and as we get it we need to draw even closer because here's the deal this is what this is what was said to Isaiah there was a conversation that was going on in heaven right and the Lord says our father our heavenly father says or the Lord says who shall we send who will go for us right Go where? Here, right? To do what? To warn, right? Or to speak to the people, right? Because here's the thing. God won't do a single thing without first letting his servants, the prophets, know. So God was calling for the prophets to come forth, right? So here, this is Isaiah chapter 6. See, and, and look, the reason that I'm doing this too and I'm sharing this stuff like this and we're bouncing from place to place to place is this. Sometimes people like to focus just on one thing and talk about this one verse. And, and you could expound on this one verse all day long and you could bring out all different points from this one verse. But that doesn't help you to turn the car on. That doesn't, you could have the key to a house, a key to a lock. You could have a key all day long, but until, until you put the key in the ignition and turn it, and turn it on, um, you just gonna have a key. <laughs> you know, you just gonna have a set of keys. You just gonna have a set of keys, but until you put it where it needs to go and turn it on, you can't start it up. So we got to activate these scriptures, right? We need to understand how these scriptures are all fitting together. And one of the things you're gonna hear me continually saying is it all fits together. Like like putting a puzzle, I still ain't brought that puzzle back here. It's like putting a puzzle together, putting the pieces. And the more you put the pieces together, the more you get to see the picture unfold, right? So Isaiah chapter six, Isaiah is called to be a prophet, right? So it says in the year of King Uzziah, the year that he died, 
I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up. Okay, remember, we got to humble ourselves, right? And so we got to remember, you know, we little people, we down here on the earth. We ain't nothing but a drop in a bucket. Like, that's how small we are, a drop. All of us could fit in a drop in a bucket, right? We So, so we need to keep that in mind. So, so Isaiah. He's in a humble place because in the year that King Uzziah died, he sees the Lord high and lifted up. So he had to be humble in order to recognize that, right? He says, and the train of his robe filled the temple, the train. Okay, so to understand the train of the world, we're not talking about a choo-choo train. We're not talking about a vehicle. We're talking about like, like to understand that, think of a bride. And her dress, right? And then she has this long veil, this this veil that that like go way back somewhere, right? So the train, and that's called a train, right? So the train of his robe, what is filled the temple? Okay, it filled it. It says above it stood seraphim. These are a, a, a rank of angel, a type of angel. So it says above it stood seraphim. Each one has six wings. With two, he covered his face. Now we're talking about the seraphim. These are angels in heaven and how humble they are in everything that they're actually able to experience. It says two covered his face, two covered his feet, and then he flew with two. It says, and one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full full of his glory and the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out who was crying out these seraphim right these and then these are high-ranking angels right they were crying out it says and the house was filled with smoke right 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 it says so i said because because I Isaiah has been allowed to see all this stuff, right? So it says, so I said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Y'all, that's us today. Our mouth gets us into so much trouble. Jesus said it's not what goes in our mouth that defiles us. It's what comes out of our mouth. So the things we say, me too, y'all. I'm not pointing my fingers at nobody. I'm saying all of us, we are all men of unclean lips. All of us. And it's a struggle. Even in James, it talks about that, about how the tongue is unruly, right? It's a, it's a struggle. So so he, I say he's saying, woe is me for I am undone. I'm undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he taken with the tongs from an altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Also, I heard the voice. Now he's hearing, right? He's not just seeing, but he's hearing. He says, Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who and who will go for us, right? Then I said, here I am, send me. How many of you have said to the Lord, yes? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. I need to stop singing when I do these videos. <laughs> who, who of you have said yes to the Lord? Yes. Who of you... Um, have ministries that you said that that your ministry has come from the Lord. Then, then if that's the case, you have said yes to the Lord. Um, uh, so he says. Then I said, Here I am. Send me. And so he says. So the Lord says, Go and tell this people. Go and tell this people. Um, and so this is what he was supposed to tell them. Keep on hearing. Keep on hearing and do not understand. Keep on seeing and do not perceive. 
He said, make the hearts of the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed if you remember in Chronicles, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, recognize how great the Lord is and that we need him and how little we are. We can't do this. People are taking their lives, y'all. People are committing suicide because the strain, the stress is too much for them. It is too much. People are, are struggling. People are doing things that they have no business doing, taking things and putting themselves in positions to now get in trouble with the law because they this everything that's going on out here is a struggle and they don't know how and so it's like flight fight or flight i guess you call it they're struggling to try to survive when all they got to do is return to king jesus he said if you will humble yourself humble yourself if you will pray talk to him talk to him you don't have to sound all religious don't do that don't try to sound religious just talk to him how you you see how i talk talk to him how you talk to him how however you sound come to him pray he said seek my face and turn from your wicked ways he says then i will hear from heaven i will forgive you of your sin and I'll heal your land. He'll turn around look just like God can elevate us. He can he can humble us too and cause us to lose a lot of stuff. So he's telling us the stuff to look for. And in these things that we're told to look for, he's telling us what to do to humble ourselves. So he says, this is what um, Isaiah was told from the Lord to say to the people. Keep on hearing and do not understand, but do not understand. Keep on seeing but do not perceive make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes less or in other words in uh, um or else or else this is what happens so it says lest they see with their eyes because you know the signs right jesus said in john 6 26 he said you seek me not because you saw the signs right right so he says lest they see with their eyes they see these signs and they get it lest they see um and hear with their ears so once they begin to get it and then we begin to hear we begin to understand Excuse me, it says, and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. So how are you going to get your, heal your, your healing? Are you seeking a healing in any area? Are you seeking to be restored in any area? How are you going to get that? Number one, you need to hear. Number two, you need to open your eyes to see. You're either going to hear the word. Or you're going to see the signs because there's there's two ways there's two ways that we get this in us and so then then um verse 11 says then i said lord how long and he answered he said until the cities are laid waste and without inhabited and houses are without a man and the land is utterly desolate we're getting there y'all we're getting the stuff is falling apart Stuff I just learned the other day, a couple of days ago, that there are places where there are it's like a it's like a um ghost town. There are like lit literally places, cities where you have all these houses, but there's nobody in them. I literally saw that. I saw that. I I'm gonna uh since I'm doing this as a YouTube, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this together and I'm gonna get a clip from what I saw so that you can see what I saw. Like, cause there was a person, they were standing on top of one of these houses and like, it's just rows, hundreds of houses and there's nobody living in A lot of streets, um, everything's overgrown. All these houses are kind of just left here, abandoned. A lot of them have things left inside. And I mean, you guys can see how overgrown this is. Nothing's been taken care of. I mean, this place was a toxic, you know, land over here. That's why everything is abandoned. wasn't safe for people to live here. So 
now it's just all sitting here. Like I said, there's so many houses all boarded up. But, but I'm going to emphasize this. It said that we are to believe in him whom he sent. So, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. So what I'm about to say is this. Because a person speaks a lot about Jesus or believes in Jesus, that does not mean that he does not honor and believe in Jehovah. He, that does not mean that this person does not believe in the Father. We are told this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. In Psalm, it says, kiss the son. I think it's chapter two. It says, kiss the son, lest God be angry and you perish. Like, like, oh, y'all, we, we, we get hung up over so many little things that we miss the bigger picture of everything and as a matter of fact God's word told us to not be arguing over um over uh uh stuff like this to not argue over his word we supposed to come to the unity of Christ so at the end of the day at the end of the day let's agree on the fact that Jesus is king that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he came to this earth, he was born into this earth through a virgin, he ministered on this earth, did many amazing and powerful works on this earth, trained disciples on this earth to keep going because he was getting ready to sacrifice his life for us, which he did on nights and 14. He paid our debt in full, in full. He was in the grave. On the third day, he rose, you know, and, and when he arose, he was on earth for a little while and, and he um, shown himself to many people and then he ascended to heaven. And when he ascended to heaven, he sent back to earth the Holy Spirit. Like, like these are things that we can agree on. These are things that happen that we can agree on by faith. It says, believe, believe in him whom he sent. Believe in King Jesus. Um, it says, then, therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, and it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, truly, I say to you, verily, verily, for real, for real. <laughs> Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world and they said to him Lord give us this bread always and Jesus said to him I am the bread of life he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst catch that I'm not going to read further because he said more stuff. But, but catch that. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Now, now, I'm not talking about just for food. But let's look at this thing. When, when you say a person is hungry for something, they're driven, right? He who comes to me shall never be hungry. To the point that we have to drive ourselves like so hard because or get our grind on as they say you know we we're grinding because we're trying to get something why because we're hungry right right it says he who comes to me shall never hunger never hunger okay um he who believes in me shall never thirst now a person that is thirsty how do y'all say that like, like what's what how do you define a person that is thirsty um like the, do, he said, he who believes in me shall never thirst. I'm going to let y'all do that. Maybe y'all comment in the comments and let me know, you know, how, how, what do you call a person that's thirsty? Because I've seen like, like that's a slang, right? Um, so what do you call a person that is thirsty? <laughs> I call a person that is hungry, a person that is driven, right? Um, and so they'll push themselves because they're driven because they want to like, they, they have this goal that they're aiming for, you know? And, and so Jesus says, whoever comes to me shall never hunger. He says, whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to cut this video right here. And uh, yeah.
Y'all, that, that, that just blessed me. And I hope it blessed you too. And I hope that all of this that I shared, that it complements your own personal Bible study. This is not to be, this video is not to be your Bible study. It is supposed to complement your own Bible study. There were some little nuggets that, that I shared in here that should have made you say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, all right, I'm getting this. And, and from that point, you go and get your word and eat it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that is the work that we have from God to do. We are to work the work that God has given us. And that work is that we believe in the Son of God, whom our Heavenly Father sent for us. All right. Bye. Have a good one.